when you look at us um, in the federal capital territory, I call us as an endangered species. We're endangered in the sense that we live in a country where laws do not apply uniformly to the citizenry. Why I say this is because uh, the lacuna created by the, uh, the Constitution, particularly in Section 2999 uh, of, the, of, of the Constitution, we are, we are referred to as if we are one of the states of the Federation, in itself is not an entitlement. When you have a section of uh, a constitution that can be interpreted to justify certain things in certain way and to, to not to actually give you and leave you at par with other states of the federation, already the constitution has, has put you on a disadvantage. But let me thank the current uh, the incumbent president, Bola Metinubu, who actually has been able to change the narrative by appointing one of us as a minister. But beyond this, the constitution actually needs to be properly um, put in proper perspective so that subsequent leaders will not come in and interpret it as it suits them. One of uh, the worst things that will happen to us in the federal capital as natives is for us to remain silent. Once we remain silent, then I would say that uh, the worst is yet to come. But thank God, uh, the younger ones are speaking louder than we, we spoke. And we are equally not keeping quiet. So uh, I believe that one of the ways that we get out of this uh, 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 cage that the Constitution have put us into is for us to heighten the advocacy for a change and inclusiveness in our Constitution. Secondly, if you look at the, the countries we copied their, their system, their presidential system, we actually do not follow verbatim the way they practice their own presidential system. We imported some elements of the British unicameral you know, legislature. And then, of course, to a larger extent, the American federal system of government. Immediately after the independence, Nigeria actually practiced unicameralism as against the bicameralism that has been practiced now. I actually do not know uh, what brought about um, who were colonized by the British, but by implication, practicing a government from a country that was equally colonized by the same British government. So, if you look at it now, uh, uh, it's 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 not a case of what is good for the goose that should be good for the gander. When it suits the politicians at the federal level, when they are looking for the votes of the people of the federal capital territory, they tell us that yes, we are one and the same. But as soon as victory is secured including the states where we were excised from, Koji, Nasarawa, Kaduna, Niger. At the end of the day, they come they are at the federal level scavenge for these positions that FCT ab initio will have been given. A very good case in question has to do with uh, a former deputy governor of Koji State that was appointed as a federal commissioner a position that is reserved for the uh, F F F FCT. Now, they have what we don't actually have in the federal capital territory. And they still want to come in and scavenge for the little that we have. It's an aberration. So they are, they, they are not advocating for their brothers that have been left to wander like a lost ship in the desert. So, my take here is that, of course, the federal, the federal government has to do something. Uh, the younger ones coming might not be as too silent, might, might, not be, may, might, might not be as friendly as we are. And of course, the, the government has sensed it. And recently, let me also appreciate uh, the Minister of FCT 
but it's a yes of okay. He has created strategically the Monday Secretariat for Women and then the Monday Secretary Monday Secretary for, for the Youth. Yes, it's a good step in the right direction. And beyond this, FCT must be properly placed where it belongs so that we equally have a representative. We have our leader who we elect. Call him whether governor or you call him a mayor. Of course, we need to have a representative that is res that will be responsive to the yearnings and aspirations of the people of the Federal Capital Territory. And we are not saying that it's going to be an exclusive preserve of the natives. We have a very large heart in the Federal Capital Territory. We accommodate virtually all the accommodative, uh, accommodatables. And we allow people to aspire politically to any, to whatever, to any highest political uh, position in the FCT. So we are not saying those things we are clamoring for should be an exclusive preserve of the natives. Oh, let them, those who are qualified, let them apply. But I know the natives are going to pick them for, for, for it. Look at the implication of living your life in the Federal Capital Territory where no citizen, no inhabitant will ever become a governor. What do you call that constitution? The constitution is not actually uh, 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 fair. Let me use that word. The constitution is not fair to the natives of the territory. The current political arrangement is not fair to the natives of the territory. And it means for eternity, if nothing is done, nobody from the FCT will become the president of this country. Because you need to start from somewhere. Look at the antecedents, except with, to the military uh, leaders who are, that we've had in this country. But when you look at the antecedents of those that have become president, democratically elected president, you have to pass through certain stages before you get to that higher level. Where are the stages that will enable anybody from the federal capital to become the president of this country? More or less like we are living in an era of apartheid, the way the South Africans lived before eventually they got their freedom. So, I feel that we need the status of a state as I said earlier, what is good for the goose is good for the gander. What is good for the other states should be good for the citizens of the or the inhabitants of the federal capital territory. Anything short of it? Never. Yes. And the constitution emphatically states and categorically states that all citizens of this country are equal. And for no reason should there be any discrimination against any citizen of this country. But this is an outright discrimination against the natives of the territory. It, it will take probably four or five decades for the inhabitants of the territory to become a senator. Yes, just one senator for the entire territory. Okay, I do that had been was there for almost 20 or several years. Apart from him, who else? So this is what we are, we are saying. You, you have talented people in the Federal Capital ter ter Territory, like the youth leader that was recently uh, appointed as uh, the Monday Secretary. Somebody that I've known for almost close to about one and a half decade. You have so many of them. It's one out of many. Yes, it's one out of so many talented you should have an inhabitant, inhabitant. But the opportunity is not there to manifest their innate potentials. And that is why it is absolutely necessary that what is good for other states should be good for the natives of the FCT. <laughs>